Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you guys want to know how I busted through my plateau, then definitely stick around. All right, so today I am going to talk about how I busted through my plateau finally. And we're not talking like a little six week plateau. I have been plateaued on my weight loss since probably like close to February-ish. And it is now July. Finally, 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 the scale has been moving. But basically what I have been doing is I've just been eating lazy keto intuitively. Um, I am not the type of person that I like to count macros. I actually hate counting macros. I look at counting macros like a diet. And when I eat keto intuitively, only eat when I'm hungry and I stop when I'm full or content, I, I don't even really feel like it's a diet. So first, let me just kind of tell you what eating lazy keto intuitively even means. So intuitive eating is basically when you only eat when you are hungry. Basically when your stomach signals, you know, you or your brain or whatever, that you're truly hungry, not like, oh, I'm bored, you know, or I'm watching an, a Netflix movie and I need a snack. Like that's not true hunger. When your stomach literally like grumbles a little bit and it's like, hey girl, you gonna feed me anytime soon? Then <laughs> you know it's real hunger. Just look for that real hunger. And um, that is when you eat. And then when you stop eating, you just basically wait till you're content. And if you are gonna eat till you're full, don't eat till you're stuffed. Eat till you're just slightly full or content. Um, but that is basically the definition of intuitive eating and then lazy keto. A lot of people have a misconception that lazy keto and dirty keto are the same thing. That is absolutely inaccurate. Lazy keto is when you basically are still eating the healthy foods. You're still eating, you know, kind of a whole based food. You're eating the good nutritious keto foods you just are not putting everything that you eat into a macro app you're basically not counting your macros um the only thing you're really keeping track of are your carbs um so that's kind of what lazy keto is dirty keto on the other hand dirty keto is when you're just eating really like the crappier kind of foods that you could possibly find on keto. <laughs> um, you're, not, you're, you're not really eating the vegetables and all that good stuff that you're supposed to be eating. But in a nutshell, that is basically what intuitive um, lazy keto eating is. So I think lazy keto intuitive eating is a great approach because for one, it kind of disconnects you from that necessity to feel like you need to eat. I feel like society is always like, oh, it's breakfast time, we gotta eat breakfast. It's lunch time, we gotta eat lunch. Oh, it's dinner, we gotta eat dinner. You know, and that is not how we were made to roll, basically. I mean, we were made to eat when we're hungry and then just not eat when we're not. So I feel like lazy keto intuitive eating is really kind of healthy and it almost kind of heals you in my personal opinion because um, you know, I've talked about this before on my channel. I um, am definitely, I come from a background where I was obese. I was 204 pounds on a frame that was 4'11". I was a major binge eater. Um, I was definitely emotionally connected to food. You know, I just came from a background where I had an eating disorder. And I still, I feel like anybody that comes from a background where you were morbidly obese like that, you are always going to kind of have that eating disorder in the back of your head. I just feel like that's just kind of something that is really, really hard to go away or it kind of never goes away. Um, so I feel like when you go to intuitively eating and really listening to your body, which isn't easy, not even going to pretend like it is, um, some, so many people struggle with this, I feel like, and so many people are like, how do you do that? And it's, one of those things where you literally just have to, you have, I mean, it does really come down to willpower. It comes down to discipline and you just have to be stronger than your emotional feelings, to be honest with you. Because when you start to learn how to eat intuitively, you really break that kind of emotional connection with food. You know, you break that, I gotta eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you break that, um, I'm watching Netflix, so I need 
an entire Lily's chocolate bar or you know just that kind of thing and once you really learn how to eat intuitively it really kind of breaks that binge eating cycle but yes I just feel like intuitive eating kind of breaks that emotional connection with food you just learn to eat um, when it is necessary you just learn to eat when your body is basically telling you it's time I'm hungry and then you fuel yourself and go about your business and to be honest with you it saves you time during the day and all that good stuff because you're actually eating a little bit less I feel like some days you eat less and then some days you eat more I guess it depends on your hormones during the day because there are days that I might eat two or three times a day and then like yesterday for instance I only ate once because I was so busy I just wasn't hungry I didn't really think about food so I only ate dinner at like 4 30 and that's kind of what intuitive eating is is you just it disconnects you from food and you don't even like I didn't even think about food all day yesterday until I finally was felt my hunger signals in my stomach and I was like oh I'm hungry I should probably eat now and um, it's such a great feeling like it's almost liberating because your brain isn't constantly nagging at you to eat three times a day and snacks and everything else I don't know about you guys but I was that person that if I was bored if I was watching TV if I was sad if I was happy like I used every occasion as an excuse to eat something and I'm like, why are you doing that? You know, it's like it doesn't it doesn't even make sense why you're doing that, Misty. Um, so, yeah, again, it just disconnects you away from the food and um, you get to just you get to have more of your day back because you're not constantly thinking about what you're going to eat next. And honestly, when it comes to keto and intuitive eating, I feel like they work really well together, to be honest with you, because even though I'm a firm believer in calories in and calories out absolutely matter, um, I feel like not all calories are created equal as well. So I feel like you can eat a few more calories on keto than what you would on the standard American diet because of where your calories are coming from. But, um, you know, like I said, when you eat intuitively, you're only eating what your body is calling for, and therefore you add keto on top of that, which your ba body's basically like a fat burning machine, um, and that's like weight loss on fire right there. So, I mean, to me, it's like a win-win, where if you're putting all your numbers into a macro app, and your macro apps basically telling you oh you need this many more calories or you need this much more fat or whatnot um, I feel like that is less effective because your macro app doesn't know your whole story you know maybe you went to the gym and you burned 600 calories at the gym or maybe you had a lazy day and you sat on the couch all day like your macro app um, I feel like can kind of vouch for that kind of stuff, but then not really because does your macro, app, I mean, you can put your exercises and stuff that you do in your macro app, but how accurate is the macro app as far as exactly how many calories you really burnt? It's probably not that accurate, just saying. Um, where your body is complete 100% accuracy. So if I go to the gym and I work out, if I do a major CrossFit workout for half an hour, 45 minutes, and I burn four or 500 calories, I'm probably gonna be hungrier that day rather than a day that I sit on the couch and watch Netflix videos all day long. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Like, I never get those days. But wishful thinking, y'all, wishful thinking. <laughs> Moral of the story, intuitive eating kind of tells you the truth. Macro apps just tells you what it's supposed to tell you, I guess. All right, so I wanted to share some tips with you guys on how me personally, how I kind of taught myself how to eat intuitively. Um, and besides these tips, I just want to throw out there again, it does take discipline. It does take motivation. You know, it's... It's gonna be a struggle in the beginning. In the beginning, you're gonna have to really, really listen to your body because I'm not gonna say this is gonna be easy because that would be a lie, but it's definitely doable, you know, and you just gotta get through that initial, um, 
emotional connection with food. That's the biggest thing is we're all so emotionally connected with food. We connect, if you really think about it, society connects food with everything. Look at every single family function you go to. Look at, you know, weddings and birthdays and graduations and look at all this stuff that you go to. You know, you go out with your friends, you go, you know, it. everything is connected with food and it just, that's just how society is. So you really got to break that emotional connection, to be honest with you. So that is tip number one. Not going to be easy, guys. I wish it was, but it's not. Um, tip number two, if you think you're hungry, drink some water first. And then if you drink a little bit of water, um, and I'm not saying like chug 16 ounces of water. Just sip on water a little bit. And if your body's still telling you you're hungry after that, then you're probably hungry. Another tip is look at your emotional state of mind. You know, are you sad? Are you happy? Are you bored? Are you um, just chilling, watching Netflix? You know, is that why you're thinking you're hungry? So if you start to think that you're feeling hungry and then after you question yourself, all those questions, what am I feeling emotionally? You know, then you know, like I said, reevaluate after you ask yourself all those questions and see if you're hungry. And if you're still truly hungry after you kind of dissect what your brain is going through at the moment, then you're probably hungry. So then another tip I have for you guys is if you have to use a smaller plate at first, because if you get a large plate and you fill it full of food, you may not stop when you're content or slightly full. Because I don't know about you guys, but I grew up in the clean your plate club. So, I mean, you had to sit at the table until you cleaned your plate. Worst comes to worst, use a small little plate. Just use like a salad plate or something like that. And don't overfill your plate. Eat that plate of food. Reevaluate. Am I content? Am I slightly full? Do I really want more? You know, and if you are still truly hungry, which I highly doubt you will be, but if you are, then go back and put just a little bit more on your plate. And I wouldn't even fill the plate the second time. I'd just put a teeny tiny bit more just to get the rest of the urge of hunger off. And another thing too is chew your food. Don't, I mean, I, I've been guilty of this. We're all in a hurry. We just shove it in and we're done, you know? Um, but really enjoy your food. Don't have distractions. Chew your food and like I said, just enjoy it. Don't don't rush through your dinner because then it's going to be like, oh my gosh, you know, oh, you remember eating that plate of food, you know? So just enjoy it, relax, and really concentrate on your food. Spend your time with your food. And kind of a benefit to eating this way is I feel like cravings kind of go away. Um, I do still eat dessert sometimes, but I would not say that I have to have dessert all the time like I did, you know, like keto dessert. Um, because all those sugar alcohols and stevia and all that good stuff, they still um, bring on basically cravings, like sugar cravings. Even though it's a natural sugar, it still signals something in our brains that says, hey, you know what, you want a keto cookie or you know, something. But, um, so when I eat intuitively, I don't feel like I need those desserts every single day, to be honest with you, which is good because, I mean, really, to be honest with you, the a dessert is still a dessert. They need to be treated like a dessert. I mean, I'm not here to judge anybody, so if you're the type of person where you eat a dessert every single night and it works for you, hey, you know what, you go for it because, my journey is different than your journey, just like your journey is different from somebody else's journey. So everybody has their own journey. Everybody has what works and doesn't work for them. And, you know, I just think that everybody should do what is best for them. So this is my biggest tip, I think, out of all of these is be patient with yourself. Believe in yourself. Know that this is going to be a struggle because, like I said, it takes discipline, it takes willpower, and it takes motivation, you guys. Um, it's going to be a little bit hard in the beginning, but is it going to be worth it? Absolutely it is. You're going to see results, especially if you are in a plateau and you truly start eating intuitively. 
you're probably gonna bust through that plateau because then you're only gonna be giving your body what your body truly needs. You know, especially if you work out, like you throw workouts into the mix and your body's gonna be a fat burning machine again, you guys. If you have to, so that way you don't get frustrated, don't get on the scale, you know? I go, there's times I go weeks and I don't get on the scale just because I would rather go by how I look, I would rather go by how my clothes feel rather than the scale, because the scale doesn't always tell the whole story. Weight loss is rarely linear. Weight loss is usually like a huge roller coaster ride, trust me. I've been on this journey for over a year now and I have lost 60 pounds, although I did go on a vacation and enjoyed myself and I did gain a little bit back that I'm still trying to lose. Weight loss is a roller coaster. You're gonna have your ups, you're gonna have your downs. There isn't very many people where I've just seen their weight loss goals just go do this. And if you are that person, then you are one lucky little person because that is not most of us. <laughs> but I think that's all I have for you guys. If you guys have any video requests, leave it in the comments below for me so that way I can kind of see what you guys are looking for and what you guys want to see. Um, but for now, again, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate every single one of you guys. And don't forget to go out there and make today even better than yesterday. And I will talk to you in my next video. Bye!